Hi there. Congratulations on buying your Airwolf 3D Axiom 20. We're gonna go over some operations right now. We we'll come around to the back first. We begin by plugging in the power cord to the back of the printer here. Then you switch the switch on. If it comes on correctly, there will be a red light. So we start by preheating the machine. We're going to go into the screen here, select prepare, and then preheat ABS, ABS all. Now it's important to preheat the machine because there is a safety mechanism in place that will prevent you from removing or loading filament if the machine is not up to temperature. So we're going to give it just a moment or two to come up to temperature before we attempt to load the filament. Now, we're going to attach the filament guide tubes to the spool holder. Then, we're going to put the spool holder with the attached guide tubes onto the back of the printer. Now that the machine is up to temperature, we can load the filament. I have here a spool of our yellow ABS, which I'll be loading into the primary hot end. It's important when you store your filament to make sure that you put the tip of it through these holes. This will prevent the filament roll from becoming tangled or knotted and allow it to feed correctly through the extruder. So we come back here behind the printer. So right now, I'm pushing the filament through the guide tube until it comes out the end here. So I have the filament at the end of the guide tube here. I'm going to take off the top cover, set it aside, and then I'm going to do prepare extruder one load filament. It will take just a few seconds for it to start moving the gear. Apply moderate pressure, pushing it down into the extruder assembly until you feel it pulling. It's now pulling the filament into the hot end. You can see the previous material that was in there coming out. The filament I've loaded is yellow, but we're gonna purge out this extra white material that we have in there from our previous print. To do this, we're gonna to go to prepare, extruder one, and select prime filament. This command will advance the filament five millimeters or so, just a little bit. That's five millimeters of filament length not necessarily the extruded filament length. You see it's much more than five. But we'll do it one more time, just because it's still a little bit white and we want it to be completely yellow. Looks good now. We're gonna go ahead and take that away. And now we're also gonna load the secondary hot end. I'll be loading my secondary hot end with this black filament. I do it the same way by going right through the guide tube again, feeding it down through there until it comes out at the other end, which is what I have here. Now I insert it into where the filament is fed. select extruder 2 and click on load filament. This will draw the filament into the extruder. Again, 
it's helpful to apply some moderate pressure at first. Once it catches though, you shouldn't have to apply any additional pressure. It should just be drawn in. We should start to see it coming out of the end of the hot end here, as we do. So now that we've loaded the hot ends, we're going to put the shell back on the top. There's a cutout in the back where the guide tubes pass through. Make sure you get those through there. And that just sits on the top there. Now we're going to prepare the glass plate for printing. This is the printing plate for the Axiom 20. And what we're gonna do here is coat it with a solution we call Wolf Bite. Wolf Bite is a heat activated solution that has a stick temperature and a release temperature. It's important that these stick and release temperatures be maintained. If they're changed from contamination or spoilage, you can have instances where the print will fail to stick to the glass plate, or if it sticks too well and sticks on there too long, as the print cools and contracts, it can stress the glass, damaging it. So it's very important that you be mindful of contamination procedures when you're using this wolf bite. It's usually a good idea to write on the handle which wolf bite formula you're using for this brush. That will prevent cross-contamination by other wolf bites that you may have lying around your workspace. Once the plate has been coated, we're going to slide it in here. Make sure we slide it all the way back so that it's secure. Now we're ready to begin printing. I'm going to insert a card into the SD right here and print G-code files from it. We have other connectivity options. On the back is a USB connection in case you'd like to connect directly to your computer via USB. And then there's also a network connectivity option. Those of us here at Airwolf prefer the SD card connectivity option. This is simply because there's less variables involved, it's more reliable. When you have to worry about your network reliability or your computer perhaps going to sleep or restarting for updates, those are all things that could interrupt your print and ruin your project. So for reliability's sake, we generally suggest that you use the SD card connectivity. Now that we have our file saved to our SD card, we're going to put it into the slot here and access the SD card menu. We're going to select print from SD, click refresh. We see the files ready to be printed here. So the machine is just about finished preheating, should come up to temperature any second now. Here we go. The printer will begin by homing each axis, going to the zero point. And now the printer is heating up the other hot end to make sure that the auto leveling process executes correctly. It's important that you use Apex, our slicing software because the G-code that it creates will have the brush wiping and auto leveling that you need to have in there. Third-party slicer softwares will not create this G-code for you. Now that the hot end is up to temperature, the printer will now go through its auto leveling sequence. First, the print bed comes up so that the nozzle can wipe the brush in the back. You see now, the nozzle's traveling to the back of the printer to be brushed, and they're being cleaned now.
After the printer finishes with its passes through the brush, it will go over to the corners of the bed, touching these bed rails to measure the height at each corner. It's important that these bed rails be clean so that this sensing can execute correctly. If your bed rails are dirty, you can have a situation where the printer is unable to detect that the nozzle is touching the bed rails. We want to make sure that those bed rails are nice and clean. So the auto leveling has successfully executed and now the printer will begin printing. The print is now completed. We need to wait and make sure that the glass cools down in order to release the prints from the print bed. When the print bed has cooled all the way down, you should be able to remove the prints quite easily. They should not be stuck at all. If your prints are still stuck to the print bed, you'll need to remove the glass plate from the printer and run it under cool water. This will release the prints from the bed. Do not apply the cold water to the hot plate before it has cooled. The Axiom 20 comes standard equipped with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. The reason why we have such a large nozzle aperture on this machine is because we're building some rather large parts with this and it's important that we be able to extrude enough filament quick enough to make sure that we can build large things in a decent amount of time. This printer can reach 150 degrees Celsius for its bed temperature. It's important that we be able to reach such high temperatures because that helps the print stick to the print bed. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos from Airwolf 3D.